Hey guys, welcome back to another nuclear tech mod updates and changes video. Now, it has been quite some time since I have done one of these, around two, two and a half months. So, this video is pretty long, yeah, but it's also going to cover a lot of things. So, there are approximately around 37, 38 things that I need to cover, which are spread across 13 categories in total. You will find all of these things in the form of video chapters. So, without any further ado, let's get straight into this video. Starting this video with the soldering station which is similar to the arc welder in its function. Now it is crafted in an anvil using the following recipe and the soldering station is used to make all of the new circuits that have been added. There are 8 input and output slots on the sides. So in total there can be 7 inputs along with one for fluid also and then one output. Now here you can see all of the new circuits that have been added along with their recipes. Some require solvent, some don't require any fluid, just solid recipes. And also all of the upgrades are now crafted in the soldering station and if you need to get them to a higher tier, you also need the soldering station to do that. So here I am going to go for the speed level 3 upgrade. This requires solvent along with capacitor, rubber bar and also microchips. By the way, if you can't place anything manually, do remember that shift clicking always works here. So with all of the ingredients in there. The soldering station has a pretty cool animation when it is working. You can also see the speed level 3 upgrade that is being crafted, which is displayed on the top of the soldering station. And the process is kind of slow, but with speed upgrades, you can actually speed it up. So yeah, now if we take a look at some advanced recipe, like for example, the advanced control units, which is going to be used for nuclear bombs or WMDs. Then we have the control unit, quantum computers, which will be used for Gerald. So basically soldering station is pretty important. You can craft a lot of circuits from it, which will be needed for electronics. Uh, looks like we have a meteor, which will be useful for the later stage in the video. But for now, the arc welder, by the way, can craft all of the satellites now. So the satellite now is crafted with a base, which will be common for every satellite. In an assembly machine you can see the crafting recipe here and then you can also use the assembly machine to craft its component which can be attached to the satellite base using an arc welder so that is how basically all of the satellites will be crafted in the mod now let's come to the control unit and the advanced control unit which will be used for all of the nuclear weapons now so the control unit will be used for the small bombs and the advanced control unit will be used for thermonuclear bombs and other wmds so Crafting these things is important now, no longer can you craft nukes using simple components. Other thing is the dynamite sticks have been retextured, like the icons have changed, the functionality still remains the same. The conventional explosives are now less powerful in order to make the nukes feel more powerful. So Samtech, C4, all of that conventional stuff. Other than that, uh, barrels will now have a delay before exploding, so as you can see, once uh, it is triggered like a TNT, it will then explode after a one second delay. And finally, mini nukes can no longer produce gamma flash or basically any nuke with a radius less than 75 blocks will no longer produce a gamma flash. So it can't insta kill anyone in a euphemium arc. So yeah, that's that. Gerald on the other hand now has a completely different crafting recipe. It only needs the UFO point now along with quantum computers which if crafted using the soldering station. Pretty high level crafting recipe along with a lot of micro crafting. Then we also have the heavy duty element which takes stellar flux and stellar flux is from the ICF reactor so that's pretty interesting. Also we have a new component called BSCCO which is crafted by combining bismuth, strontium, calcium and copper. So a lot of micro crafting there but yeah that's the recipe for Gerard. Now let's come to something big which is the electric arc furnace. It is made in an assembly machine using the following crafting recipe. And this machine is like amazing for automation. So it is completely animated. It's a big machine. First things first, on the top you have the three placeholders for electrodes. Inside we have power, heat, then here all of the materials are gonna go. On the sides we have input output slots and also this can work as a crucible so you can liquefy metals in it or you can process them as a normal furnace. These are the four types of electrodes available. Each of them has durability and uh, yeah, they do get depleted over time but you can recycle them kind of like uh, I'm showing here so I'm going with the saturnite uh, electrodes here the highest level of durability that they have and once all three of them are placed it looks something like this pretty cool and notice what happens as soon as I supply it with power 
so there goes the lid goes up and we have smoke coming out of it so this machine is pretty well animated and it looks amazing when it's functioning so here i'm going to operate it in solid mode uranium ore is gonna go in and as soon as the lid closes the arc furnace is not going to accept any more ores so they are going to get stored in the conveyor inserter now it's going pretty slow right now but also it's consuming like very little power so once this process is complete we are going to get uranium ingots out which can be extracted from the machine and then once it's full again the machine will start going now with the speed level one upgrade something interesting happens now each slot will not only take one ore but four with speed level two i think it's eight and with a speed level three upgrade this number goes all the way up to 16. so this machine can be used for bulk production as you can see 16 ores in each slot and as the inserters can put more and more of them uh basically you can mass produce any ore that you want so this works really well with the strand caster if you're using it in liquid mode but uh, make sure to utilize multiple slots for input and multiple slots for output because even right now the output slot can't really keep up so yeah that's how the machine works with all of these speed upgrades pretty cool the lid goes up and down pretty fast and here's the machine working in the liquid mode it's kind of the same but uh, instead of getting solid output you are going to get uh, all of the metals in liquid form so they need to be stored or they need to be casted using either the strand caster or the normal foundry basins you can do whatever you like with them and the materials will be stored inside in the liquid form and you can see their quantities by hovering your mouse over so pretty similar to how the crucible works in this case another thing is that the ore acidizer was reworked visually at least it's one block shorter now the ladder is in the middle you can still climb it and it overall it looks pretty cool than before because uh, it's much more clearer now also all of these slots have been shifted out to bottom so input output power everything is on the bottom now. and this machine is crucial for basically processing the new bedrock ores for example the byproduct which needs to be washed takes exactly four uh, byproducts and then it can wash it so this can be problematic because if you have uh, the ore which is not in multiples of four so here i have every byproduct the sulfuric byproduct of bedrock ore which is in odd numbers so eventually once this machine keeps running it the number will go down but then the machine will clog so all of the other byproducts this was the lightweight byproduct but all of the other byproducts will then be stored in the inserter and overall the entire production line will stop what the acidizer input partitioner does is it only lets the ores pass when they meet the required number so when there are four of them only then they will pass in basically clumps of four so in this manner once we have the partitioner in line then every ore can be processed because whichever ore which is not in the required amount will not pass through the conveyor line next up we have the electrolysis machine its timings have been changed so water is now processed in like half a second it can also now accept overdrive upgrades so the process can go like really really fast also the electrolysis machine processes bedrock ore in like what three seconds so yeah the electrolysis machine is pretty important when it comes to ore processing as you can get a lot of materials out of it from the byproducts that are available using nitric acid now i have covered bedrock ore processing in a separate video you can find it here but i'm going to give you an overview of it so basically you find it by either using the lens or using the survey scanner but this time the ores have changed this will give you six types of ore that are available or that you can see in the top left hand corner of your screen they are still mined using the large mining drill but the bedrock ore that will come out will have the six threads now these six threads basically decide uh, how much material you are going to get so this will then be processed in a bedrock ore processing machine and once the process is done based on the traits that the ore had you will get a material out of it the bedrock ore processor is completely animated it's pretty cool and yeah so we got non-metal ore because non-metal has a high chance here it has a moderate chance compared to the other metals that are available highly recommend you watch the full video right there 
As for the silex and the fusion reactor, the silex has a fixed chance of giving you the separate products now. So materials have a weight of 100 and the probability distribution is divided inside it. So after 100 operations, cycle will repeat. And you can see like for example here we have 80, 10, 5 and 5. So after 100 operations, we are guaranteed to get these products in their exact ratio. Same goes for the fusion reactor byproducts now. The box ducts have changed, they are much cleaner now, especially the copper ones. And they only form the bolts on intersections. So if you turn them, then no longer the bolts will form, but on an intersection, bolts are going to form. And the exhaust pipe is, or basically it now has a rusty look, as you can see here. So it looks much more like an exhaust pipe now. Uh, looks pretty cool. So yeah, that's the changes for the ducts. Now we have new types of concrete by the way. So there's the bronze plating and the desert stone. Limestone is used to make concrete now, limestone powder. And uh, yeah, basically this is how these two concrete variants look. Chain link fence no longer forms any intersection or basically it's much more clean looking now. If you want a fence post, then there is a separate block for it now. So chain links have also changed a little bit in their looks. We have asphalt slabs and stairs, which as you know, is much faster to work on compared to normal ground or even concrete for that matter. And stairs are the same for that matter. So these were some of the new materials. Steel grates can now be placed on top of pipes and cables. It will still occupy the block above it. So for example, here it looks flush with the ground. But I can place it here because a cable is going from top of it. But yeah, it looks much cleaner this way. The ICF pellet maker can be used to automatically make fuel pellets. I have made an entire video on it. You can check it out here. Then we have the solar boiler which has a tool tip on the amount of water and steam that it has which is pretty cool. So that's the change to the solar boiler. Next up. Turrets will no longer lock on to missiles which are ascending. They will only lock on to missiles which are descending automatically, which is pretty cool. It was a feature that the, only the radar had before, but now these help them as well. The automatic crafting table now basically sorts blocks like this or it spreads them out. No longer every ingot will end up in the same slot. HA to RF ratio has been changed. Now 5 HE is equals to 1 RF, which sucks big time. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. You don't have any config option to change it. The powered floodlight uh, consumes what 2000 HP per second and it has a pretty bright flash. And finally, meteor ores. You only have the basic types available now. So the we have iron, copper, aluminum, then rare earth and cobalt. Now cobalt is a little bit different because if we process iron, copper, aluminum, all of these will give 16 uh, ingots in total. And there is no other way to process them but cobalt on the other hand it only gives four so yeah even rare earth or it gives 16 chunks of rare earth so basically that's how the meteor ores have changed and uh, i think that was it so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and you learned something new from it in the video description, you will find other useful videos that are linked to this one if you want to go in more depth. And yeah, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Peace out my guys. Stay safe.